Do you we, know who else loves his job, or did when he was Speaker of the House? Do you still love being on with Fox and Friends? Mr. Newt Gingrich, who is Speaker of the House, also presidential candidate, Fox News contributor, and the author of the great book, Vengeance. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Out of all those jobs, what was your Good favorite? Morning. How can you... How can you not love being on Fox and Friends on Monday when Brian is at his most manic? I mean, this is what a way to start the week, you know? All right. Right. Listen, I just blew my Vatican appointment, didn't I? I there it goes. That, that job's already no, taken. No, no I, was, I was, you know, I get busy. By the way, this is what I'm talking about. See both tally lights are on? Yes, uh, the tally yeah. lights two and three are on, which is an impossibility. So we're not sure we're two camera. cameras out. Yeah. Look Mr. Speaker, we, we digress. Um, there's a Fox News alert. Apparently, the Democrats should have been careful what they worried about because now Robert Mueller, the special counsel, a uh, special investigator, is now apparently investigating the Podesta group. We know John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign manager this last campaign cycle. Now they're looking into his brother Tony's group, the Podesta group, because uh, there's a possibility. They, they were looking into Robert Mueller and his connections uh, lobbying for Ukraine, and perhaps Tony Podesta may have uh, broken the law regarding that as well. Your thoughts? The, well, you mean, you mean Paul Manafort. Paul Manafort. Uh, and, and what he was doing. Yeah. Look, look I think, for, first of all, I do think it's useful not just to look at Russia, but to look at Saudi Arabia, to look at China. I mean, lots of countries have figured out that hiring a lobbyist, giving money to a foundation, endowing a yeah. university, the level of foreign money penetrating this country uh, is very disturbing. And I think that uh, we ought to have some kind of congressional hearings just to set the record of how many different countries are trying to influence us and to remind us that a lot of these so-called professors come from endowed chairs that have been endowed by foreign governments. So they're not necessarily giving us academic truth. Uh, they're, in effect, hired spokesmen. New? Uh, in the case That's of right, Russia, I've always thought... No, I've always thought it was crazy that we're over here looking at a very, a very minor issue about Trump. You had the, the Uranium One deal. You had, I think, $135 million going to the Clinton Foundation. You had Bill Clinton getting a half million dollars. You had the Podesta group doing things that were representational, including, I believe, uh, representing a major Russian bank. Uh, the total surround for Hillary Clinton of Russian influence peddling was stunning. Yeah, a couple of things. It's, you know, I don't want to get too into detail. A, a couple of things that happened today between this uh, Podesta story, the Tony Podesta story. On top of that, the New York Times runs a story that the Intelligence Committee for the House and Senate are getting nowhere in terms of trying to see collusion between Trump and the Russians, the Trump campaign and Russians. And number three is what people should understand is, yeah, the Ukrainian government now is friendly, but the ones that, Paul, that Podesta was representing and Paul Manafort's group representing was pro-Russian. And they got overthrown by the people. Right. Uh, and and though the people, once the people spoke up and put the right person in power, then the Russians took uh, Crimea, and then they infiltrated their border, and they've tried to cut up the country ever since. So they were actually going against American interests. Yeah, look, there's no question that the previous Russian, the previous Ukrainian president uh, was so closely allied to Russia that ultimately the people of Ukraine threw him out. Uh, but you, you have this deeper story here, which I think is really, really interesting. You know, I'm, I'm surprised, for example, that nobody's demanded that all of the Clinton Foundation donations be made public. I mean, they played this game where they had the Clinton yep. Foundation in Canada, which didn't have to report while mm -hmm. the Clinton Foundation in America reported. So if it was a shady donation, it magically appeared in Canada where nobody was reporting it. All of this stuff ought to come out and be out in the open. You know, this opened my eyes to I didn't know that these countries were employing or paying lobbying firms here in America to make themselves look better. I mean, the U Ukraine hired him, Podesta's, uh, Tony Podesta and his firm, to promote sure. them and make them look good here in the West. Does this happen often? And, and how do they, how do uh, they run a campaign to look, make Ukraine look good here? Look, we really need 
congressional hearings that are very broad. I mean, because what happens is you hire a lobbyist. The lobbyist is pretty smart. In the case, obviously, of the Podesta group, you know, they're very closely tied to his brother, who is running the Clinton yeah. campaign, mm -hmm. who's a chief of staff to two different presidents. I mean, these people are wired. And what do they say to you? They say, well, you know, if you donated some to a, a university, they'd hire the right kind of professor. Now, what's the right kind of professor? Oh, it's a professor who's always going to front for that country. And then they say, and by the way, there are a couple of think tanks could use a few million dollars. And then they're going to do a conference about how great your country is. Right. And if, if you look at the total penetration of our system, I think it's very, very disturbing. Right. That's one of the advantages. If you're a billionaire and can finance your own campaign, you are free from these type of temptations. Sure. But I want to bring you to Jimmy Carter, the 93-year-old who overcame cancer, and that's great news <laughs> through this experimental drug, has also had a revelation that a lot of people like you, Newt Gingrich, have said before. And he said this to Maureen Dowd of the New York Times. When the question was, did the Russians purloin the election for Hillary Clinton? Did they give the election to Hillary? His answer? Rosie and I have a difference of opinion on that. I don't think there's any evidence that what the Russians did changed enough votes or any votes. He went on to say that he believed that because Barack Obama didn't deliver, that's why, and Hillary Clinton was a below average candidate, that's why Donald Trump won. Well... What do you want me to say other than that's pretty accurate? <laughs> I mean, Jimmy Carter is the most accurate Democrat I mean, in America? <laughs> I'm afraid so. At 93, he seems to be doing better than a lot of the other Democrats. But look, I mean, here, here's reality. You mentioned this a minute ago. Maybe the two intelligence committees aren't finding any collusion because there wasn't any collusion. I mean, for Pete's oh, sake, we're yeah. now into, about to, we're about to enter one year from the election. One year. Now, if they can't find anything in one year, maybe it doesn't exist, and maybe they owe an apology to Donald Trump, who may have won the presidency on his own, uh, despite all the smears and all the lies and all the distortions. Mr. Speaker, even the left is criticizing Rachel Maddow for something she said last week, linking uh, President Trump's travel ban to the four Americans that were killed in Niger. Listen to this sound bite, and we'll get your reaction. Blanket banned people from Chad. Nobody from Chad can get a visa to come here anymore. Right after that, that's when four U.S. Army soldiers got attacked. So the Huffington Post came out with an article criticizing her, saying, quote, there was just one problem. Maddow's theory was so flimsy that it could be debunked by a quick glance at a map, let alone a phone call with an expert. What's your reaction? Oh, why would you want Rachel to change her entire method of operation? I mean, facts are so difficult. They burden you so much. If you already have the purity of left-wing nonsense, why should you have to go and learn anything that's factual? Uh, she has a great fantasy life. Whatever goes wrong in the world, Donald Trump did it. If she goes out in the morning and she has a flat tire, probably Donald Trump came during the night and slashed her tire. I mean, the, the whole left is crazy about this stuff. They have a, they, I, I was interviewed by some young reporter the other day, and I finally said to him, you have a pathology. I mean, your pathology is anti-Trumpism. Uh, and that's where she's at. I mean, why would you demand this? First of all, she'd have to know that Niger was in Africa. Then she'd have to know where Africa was. I mean, look at the <laughs> burdens you're putting on her. Right. Uh, I think it's very unfair to pick on her. Uh, she's one of the great fantasists on television. Right. And I think we should just respect her for I having really live fantasies. I think Newt uh, Gingrich just offended Rachel Maddow. Right. Pinch me. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Mr. Speaker, l uh, tomorrow, the President of the United <laughs> States is going to go up to Capitol Hill and uh, he's going to talk to Republicans in the Congress about, uh, particularly the House, uh, about them passing the Senate's budget framework, which the Senate passed last week. We know that the Freedom Caucus generally doesn't a lot of, like to uh, go down the road where there's a lot of spending. There is a lot of spending in this, but we've heard that uh, it sounds like they're going to just go ahead and say, okay, whatever the Senate says, we're going to go for it because otherwise it would take two weeks of debating. Do you think this is going to be a win for the president and the Republicans, finally? Look. This, this, is, this vote is symbolic. What this vote does 
is it unlocks the process to pass a tax cut. And I think that, that Mark Meadows and the Freedom Caucus have it exactly right. This is, a, this is the preliminary vote to get to a giant tax cut to help the American people, help the economy, grow jobs, increase take-home pay. And so I would say that if you want to get a tax cut this year, which Republicans need to get reelected in 2018, then you vote yes on this. You recognize the budget's just the beginning of a debating process anyway, but you've now triggered the mechanism so that the Senate can pass a tax cut mm -hmm. with 50 votes. And I think at that point we have a real mm. shot at getting a tax cut this year. So the president's going to go to the House side and say, please pass the Senate budget. He's going to go to lunch with the senators and say, please get ready to pass a tax cut. Uh, I think it's a very, very important moment for the Republican Party. It would be very interesting to see if we can get Alexander Murray to some type of health care reform in a way in which he can find acceptable because American people on a lot of levels want to see something going on between both parties together. Yeah. Meanwhile, I want to focus on the NFL if I could. The president just tweeted. Yeah, he just tweeted this out. Two dozen NFL players continue to kneel during the national anthem, showing total disrespect to our flag. No leadership in the NFL. We saw a lot of empty seats this weekend, Newt. We saw eight Seattle Seahawks and six uh, San Francisco 49ers and others about a handful stay in the tunnel. Where's this story going? Well, let me say, first of all, this is a very painful Monday morning for you to raise the NFL. Clist and I own one share of Packer stock. <laughs> Our second favorite team is the Falcons. We had such a bad Sunday that the fact that you would raise the NFL this morning is almost well, more as than a I giant fan, do you think I'm uh, enjoying it? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There are some seasons worse than our season. I apologize, Brian. I wasn't thinking. Thank you. Uh, look, I, I think this, I, I think what part of what Trump is doing is Trump personifies. He's not causing the polarization. He personifies a polarization which has been growing in America. There are people who believe that the American flag, as General Kelly said the other day, is, is sort of a sacred icon, that the right. national anthem is important to bring us together, that the Pledge of Allegiance really matters. And then there are people who, frankly, are outside the American norm, and, and there's a growing number of people over here who have the exact opposite view, and this is the collision we've got. Okay. The challenge for the NFL is really simple. I don't pay to watch somebody Quickly. insult me. So they are entertainers. If they don't want, if they don't want an audience, right. that's fine. Nuclear They're going to drive away their audience. Right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.